Spider bite piercings. Pros, cons, advantages, disadvantages by a piercer. Coming up next on Pros and Cons by a Piercer, episode number 40. So stick around. For those that are new to the channel, my name is Dave O. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I own and I operate the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located here in Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So when I talk to you about these things, I'm talking to you as a level of expertise, as somebody that does this professionally and has helped numerous people through the healing process. Before we get too far into this whole thing, I want to explain to you what spider bite piercings are. What they are is either lip or labrae piercings that are done in a grouping off to the side of one of the corners of the mouth. Usually, and most, most commonly, they were done with uh, rings. The first set of spider bites I ever did, we never called it a spider bite. We called them, uh, I want to do two lip piercings. And it was on a good and close and personal friend of mine. And a lot of people will ask about the slipknot plaque that's in the background right over there. Um, yes, I knew those guys. Yes, I was really close, especially with Paul Gray. He was the uh, first person that I did this particular set of piercings on um, way back in probably 95, 96. So a long time ago. And he had those throughout his life. So let's get into it. Let's get into the pros and the cons, the advantages, disadvantages of spider bite. Number one, they have a long history of healing without issue or problem. They're not a piercing that is experimental or prone to rejection or other problems. They tend to heal fairly easy if you take care of them properly. In, um, usually most people have the correct anatomy. I don't think I've ever passed up anybody because they didn't have the correct anatomy for this particular piercing. Number two, because it's on the side of your mouth opposed to the center or both sides, it gives you a side that you can use to eat with, to sleep on, etc. So it kind of breaks up some of the hassles that are attributed to any oral piercing or any piercing on your face. Number three, it can be done either with rings or labret studs. Basically, all you have to do is make sure that you assert that you want to wear that particular style of jewelry because labret piercings tend to be do better if they're straight through. Lip piercings do better if they're kind of at an angle. Uh, if you're going to wear rings or curved jewelry, you want that slight upward angle to keep the jewelry out of your mouth and find jewelry that fits correctly. Number four, fairly quick healer. This person usually heals out in roughly about 8 to 12 weeks. Um, usually the worst of it's probably in the first uh, week or so with the swelling and discomfort um, on the inside. After that, they're pretty easy heal. Number five, I kind of alluded to this already, uh, but it doesn't affect sleeping as much as, say, an ear piercing would or piercings on your torso um, if you're a stomach sleeper. Uh, it kind of gives you, especially with uh, spider bites where it's off to one side, it gives you that ability to uh, have one side you can sleep on, eat on, etc., that you don't have to worry about having contact with bedding, etc. Now let's move on to the cons, the disadvantages. Number one, like any oral piercing, the number one uh, con to anything that you put in your mouth is you have an increased risk of enamel erosion, gum erosion, and softening of the bones inside your mouth. This is always the case with any oral piercings. Uh, lips have a little less because of the rings, kind of more outside the body. But for the most part, that risk is always there. Number two, depending on the angle of the piercing, you're limited with what type of jewelry styles that you can wear. If it's done at an angle upward, you're pretty much stuck with curved barbells and rings. If it's done straight through, you're pretty much stuck with labre studs. So you need to make that decision in advance. Number three, boy, every oral piercing swells to a degree depending on your diet, what you intake, and just if you're prone to it. Uh, swelling on these can kind of give you that fat lip effect, usually lasting um, anywhere from one to five days in some cases, 
and you can reduce that by doing various different things, which I'll get into a little bit later when I go through the consultation. Number four, can limit your chances of employment and can affect certain social um, interaction. It's one of those fierce things. It's on your face. People notice it right away. It's not easy to hide. They're not going to be, uh, it's, it's not something you can really mask. So when you get these type of piercings that are kind of bolded in your face, you really need to consider what's going to be socially acceptable in your part of the world. Also, um, your career. Is it going to be acceptable to have these piercings and get a job in the field that you are uh, training for or see yourself in? I know a lot of people will say, well, I'll just put them in until uh, I get a job. But understand that scar tissue is going to be there. If you're looking for a very conservative field, they're going to know that you were pierced there at one point, And that may affect uh, your ability to be employed. So keep that in mind in advance. Number five, like all oral piercings, this pierce, these piercings can close fairly quickly. Um, it is a piercing that you do need to leave the jewelry in pretty much nonstop. Um, there are those mutant people out there that can leave them out for long periods of time. As I mentioned towards the beginning, Paul Gray, um, like I said, was one of the first ones or first sets I ever did uh, of spider bites. And he can take his out and leave it out for a couple of months and not have problems getting it back in. He is not the normal person. Most people, these can close in a matter of a couple hours. It really depends on how long you've had the piercing, how healthy you are, and how quickly you heal in general. So always keep that in mind that when you put jewelry in your mouth, whether it's lip piercings, labrae piercings, tongue piercings, cheeks, whatever, medusas, uh, beauty marks, you are going to need to leave that piece in indefinitely until you don't want the piercing any longer or for one reason of life, life changes or whatever, you have to abandon it. So with all the cons and all the pros out of the way, let's go through uh, what I would talk to you about if you came into my studio and asked to get a, a set of spider bites. What uh, This is my basic consultation, um, starting with average chilling time, anywhere from eight to 12 weeks. For the outside, I'm gonna suggest using a sterile saline solution or mixing up a sa uh, saline solution at home using distilled water and sea salt, applying that to the piercing, um, doing compresses twice daily for um, roughly five to 10 minutes and then rinsing out under afterwards under running water. Also for the inside, I'm gonna suggest rinsing with a mild saline solution a couple times a day for those first two weeks. Um, roughly about two to three minutes. If you come into a situation where you feel like you've contaminated the area, maybe you made a mistake, I'm gonna suggest cleaning off the area with an antimicrobial or germicidal soap, best done in the shower. Um, additionally, for the first two weeks, I'm gonna suggest rinsing with an alcohol-free mouthwash, such as biotin antiseptic mouthwash, roughly two to three times a day um, for the first two weeks. Swelling. Very important part of any oral piercing and something we try to discuss right off the bat. You do want to cut down your intake of tobacco, alcohol, cannabis, hot and spicy foods, things that are extremely warm in temperature, or anything that may agitate your mouth, including vaping, until at least the swelling goes down. All those things will lead to more swelling is what we're getting at. Also, eating... Um, kind of a soft food diet initially to understand what you can handle. This piercing is not as intrusive as say a tongue piercing is where you pretty much have to pretty much relearn how to eat, but it's a good idea to stick with kind of simplistic things at first until you know what you can handle. Part of that would be also, I suggest two to three cartons of yogurt a day. Um, probiotics are great regardless, and it will help reduce the likelihood of thrush while you're rinsing as much as you are which most people don't normally rinse three times a day. So just as a precaution, plus it's easy to eat. Cold items, uh, it's your excuse to eat the frozen treats. So go at it. Um, soft foods, whatever seems to be easy to eat, it doesn't cause discomfort. Cross-contamination prevention, common sense stuff. Wash your hands before you handle it. Try to handle it by the ends whenever possible or balls. Uh, you need to avoid any additional contact. Keep everybody else's germy little fingers away from it. And understand that microorganisms do travel on the surface of your skin. So anytime you touch the area, it's a good idea to wash your hands before you do so. 
do not play with the jewelry. Uh, this piercing like is very difficult, like back to Paul Gray again. It used to drive me nuts because I'd sit there and watch him chew on it all day long. That constant moving during the healing process especially can prolong your healing period and cause other problems, um, including infection because you're drawing things into an open wound. So don't play with it. Keep your dirty little fingers away from it and stop chewing on it. No oral contact, deep mouth kissing, or sexual contact for the whole healing period, meaning 8 to 12 weeks. Um, basically, uh, once the piercing is healed, anytime you switch partners, I, I suggest practicing safe sex um, when it comes to oral sex, mainly because you're at a higher risk for STDs even after the piercing heal. So, kids and adults, practice safe sex the way you're supposed to, which means you use some type of latex barrier until you have both been tested. Keep your environment clean, clothing, bedding, towels, anything that may come in contact with it. Uh, do not submerge piercing in bodies of water you can't control the quality of, which is pretty much everything but your own clean bathtub. Um, also, additionally, uh, keep pets away from it. Don't let them sleep in the bed with you. Also, do not share food items or utensils with other people. Make sure that your own utensils are cleaned on a regular basis. Avoid sticking unclean objects in your mouth like dirty fingers, pin caps, toothpicks, etc. until it's completely healed. That pretty much sums it up. I hope I've uh, educated you and gave you enough information to make a decision on whether or not this piercing is going to be right for you. Uh, if you have any additional questions or you feel like I've not covered something completely or it's brought new questions that you have, please leave a comment. If you have things that you would like to add, pros or cons, because you have this piercing, Please do that. Uh, we love to share information here. It's part of the goal. If you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up. If you would like to see more of these videos, please subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time we post something. We post roughly four to five videos uh, covering tattooing and body piercing um, with, a, uh, with a focus on education um, weekly. So if you want to learn more, there's a good place to be. Other than that, hope all your piercings heal with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see if your body piercing needs in the future. Have a good day, everybody. Go out there, do something, and enjoy it before it's too cold to do that. See ya.